Hello, I'm Natalie Kenway, Global Head of ESG Insights at ESG Clarity, and welcome to the Green Dream video series. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Mikhail Viskursky, who is Fund Manager of the Carmignac Climate Transition Fund. Thank you so much for your time today, Mikhail. Thank you for inviting me. So, yeah, thank you, Mikhail. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you today and finding a bit more about the fund and the recent change. It was previously the Carmignac Portfolio Green Gold Fund, and it's now the Carmignac Climate Transition Fund. Can you explain the reasoning behind the name change and what else has changed? Anything else apart from the name? Uh, actually, nothing has changed uh, apart from the name of the fund. Uh, and the reason we've changed, because I mean, we, we need to go back a bit of in history. Uh, it used to be something which was mainly dedicated to commodities, equity commodities in the past, and it has been transformed about probably about 18 months ago, perhaps close to two years ago, uh, into something which has been drastically changed, which is now addressing for the past two years uh, the environment and, and climate transition um, as a whole. Uh, so we've decided to change the name towards something which explicitly says what it does. And, and we thought that probably uh, green gold was less clear than climate transition. That's why uh, we've decided to amend uh, the name towards the, the, the last one. Great, thank you. And can you give us a bit more flavor of the fund portfolio, the theme sectors, companies that you're investing in? Yeah, sure. So we, we're trying to invest in, in many different themes. Uh, the goal number one uh, is to invest in companies that are providing a solution towards uh, the climate, uh, towards the climate change question, meaning that we're trying to solve one big issue. I mean, uh, every one of us collectively and the fund uh, as an investment vehicle, we're trying to bring down uh, the carbon emission. And this is a sort of a 37 billion tons problem uh, we are trying to achieve because we need to bring that down to zero uh, in the next 25 years or so. Uh, so the challenge is absolutely massive. So there are obviously many uh, pieces to that question and many, many different ways uh, we need to address the issue. So obviously, uh, that being said, we are going to be investing in many different things, themes and things. Uh, if I take, for instance, a few uh, examples, I mean, we know that one of the biggest issues uh, has to do with all the, the power generation uh, and everything which has to do with transportation, which is today mainly based on fossil fuels. Uh, and we know that we are going to, we are going to need uh, to diverge and to move away from fossil fuels towards new type of energies. And we all know those new types of energies. I mean, namely wind, solar, hydrogen, green hydrogen, uh, and many others uh, along the way. Uh, so we are going to be investing in a number of companies uh, which are uh, at the forefront of the, of the effort of developing at scale uh, those technologies. Fantastic, thank you for that. And you mentioned um, fossil fuels and power generation transportation. Why is it important that we're engaging with the, these, high, these highly polluting industries, the, the largest emitters, in order to meet our overall net zero targets, in order to decarbonize? I've seen many sort of uh, counterintuitive reactions with my clients uh, over, the, over the past couple of years. I mean, if you want to solve the issue, uh, if, you, if, if, we, if the starting point of your GPS, say you, 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 the, the journey we have is from going from 37 to zero, if the large part of your 37 is actually in the hands of a few players, meaning the large oil and gas uh, companies uh, in Europe, in the, in the US and all the sort of international oil companies in the Middle East, these are the players and there are very few of them. I mean, if you take the 10 or 15 biggest players, they are responsible for an extremely large amount of CO2 emissions. So meaning engaging with, with them and, and sort of end up, uh, going along the way with them in the transformation of their portfolio is actually going to be much more efficient than sort of investing in a thousand of companies which are developing sort of uh, one megawatt per company. I mean, these are companies which are by far the biggest spenders today in green energy. 
Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, finally, we always end the green dream with this question. What is your favourite sustainable drink of back? Yeah, and, and, and I, so, so th this is probably where one, one question of where I'm going to surprise you is uh, it, it, this is something which I've actually bought very recently, which I haven't yet received, uh, and I will. It's actually a negative carbon vodka. Uh, which I've, which I have discovered because I mean if you look at the if you look at the landscape this is something we should never talk so never, never, very few talk about but actually uh, me buying that is really what matters is how uh, we can achieve that and how we can collectively move away from producing everything we drink from time to time to the water but but going beyond water uh, looking at everything that we actually a drink either on a weekly basis or just once every two or once every three weeks, you suddenly see that there are so many different efforts which are being done, so many amazing small companies uh, which have developed new technologies. And again, this is something new with score, but I'll, I'll give you my conclusion about how it tests. Is it really the case that this is carbon negative? Yes or no. But I found sort of the discovery of the concept completely amazing and really going into the right direction. Brilliant. Yes, I look forward to um, your feedback on that one. Um, thank you very much for your time, Miguel. Great chatting with you. Thank you.